Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this excellence module number eight uh, titled integrating physical activity and physical education in an online learning environment. My name is George Centale. I'm an educational specialist for PE here at the Office of Curriculum and Instructional Design and happy to be here to share some information with you about physical activity and physical education today. A few reminders as we get started. Um, at the end of the presentation, I'll have a bit.ly link to the entire slide deck. So for those who'd like to access it as a resource, you'll notice on a lot of slides, there's images and images. Um, if you have the slide deck, you can click on those and then you'll be able to go straight to the websites to get to those appropriate resources. So just a heads up there. And then as far as for those of you who are joining us live today, a few reminders, keep the microphones muted, except for a Q&A session. We hope to leave five to 10 minutes at the end um, for some conversation, questions, comments. Um, so please stay muted so that we can get through the content and then have some time for that interaction at the end. Um, please utilize the chat box though. This is where you can park your comments, questions, ideas as things come up. And then we can reference those at the end of the presentation during our Q and A. Uh, cameras, uh, up to you if you want them on or off. It helps me as a presenter instead of seeing uh, emojis or blank screens to see faces and people nodding their heads or looking surprised or perplexed. Uh, so feel free to turn on your cameras if you're comfortable. If not, that's okay for now, but uh, because this is a physical activity, physical education session, we will do some movement and activities. And I would ask while it's optional that um, hopefully some of you will un uh, un uh, turn your cameras on and participate with us there. So I just wanna share a little bit about myself before I get into it. And right at the center, you see uh, my role as a parent. And I'm sharing this because as we're all going through this current COVID-19 pandemic, <clears throat> um, just letting you know that I have that perspective as well. I have a preschooler and a kindergartner and the kindergartners in a, the DOE uh, system and just know the challenges that teachers face. And we really do appreciate as parents um, the communication from principals and the classroom teachers who you know are communicating via email, Google Classroom, Seesaw, and just sending those schedules and things to, to keep us on track to support our, our little learners. So I uh, just wanna share that, that I bring that perspective as well. And then on the professional front, uh, for the last two and a half years, I've been serving as the educational specialist for physical education here in the DOE. I also wear another hat where I serve as the program manager for the Healthy Hawaii Initiative Program, which is a partnership, a longstanding partnership with the Hawaii State Department of Health, uh, in which they fund eight health and PE district resource teachers across our state um, who are a tremendous resource and actually have a few of them joining us on the um, webinar today. So hopefully you'll get a chance to have some conversation with them at the end. Um, but that's another role. And real quick, I just want to share a little on my background. So uh, back in 2004, I got recruited out to the mainland to do a unique master's degree program. And it was a joint venture between uh, Grundy Center Community Schools, which is a little rural school in the middle of Iowa, the University of Northern Iowa, which was a teacher focused university and Polar, which was a uh, health and fitness tracking technology company. And it was a joint venture where grad students from all over the country, there were seven of us, came to this town um, to basically teach and use technology, but kind of do the new PE in this community. And my goal was to go for a year and come back home to Hawaii. I was coaching football at Waipahu High School at the time and come back to teach and coach. But um, my experience there really changed my life and changed my perspective. Um, I've always told people that it was sort of like teaching in PE Disneyland. Um, they had received a couple of federal grants, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we had state-of-the-art equipment, treadmills, ellipticals, rock climbing walls, um, anything you could think of, golf, disc golf, frisbee, um, rollerblades, bikes, and so on. Um, so basically, I share that because I have that sort of experience and perspective, and it was supposed to be for a year, but they ended up keeping me on, and I ended up running the high school PE program for the next five years and kind of served as a model for the new PE, and we had visitors from all over the country. Um, and I share that just to let you know, um, I bring that perspective there, and that was a pretty homogeneous demographic, mainly Caucasian there in rural Iowa. Um, along the way, I met my wife, and she went to pursue her PhD at the University of Texas, 
So I got to move in and teach in Austin Independent School District. I taught middle school health and PE, um, as well as coach football, track, basketball, and so on. And did that for a year. And at that point, I had an opportunity presented to me, and I decided to get out of the classroom and went to be uh, to work for Polar as a training specialist to teach other teachers uh, and educators how to use this fitness technology in their programs. And soon after, I became the manager of training and education for Polar for the U.S. And I spent basically the last eight years of my life before coming here traveling around the country and working with um, teachers, curriculum coordinators, uh, PE department heads, administrators, exercise scientists, and uh, everything else under the sun. And um, again, just great perspective seeing K through 12 PE programs on the West Coast, down in Texas and Florida, upstate New York, the Midwest on a regular basis. Um, so I just wanted to share that for some context. Um, very excited to have all of you with us today. And just real briefly, if you would in the chat box, just for time, we don't have time for all of you to share um, about yourself. So in a quick way, if we could just put your name your position, so if you're a resource teacher, um, if you're a classroom teacher, a PE teacher, you could put that there. Um, what school or complex or district you're in, uh, what grade level you service, and also a uh, favorite physical activity you have. See, we got some surfing on there. Um, so yeah, feel free to add that uh, activity you'd like in the chat box. And like I mentioned, we do have a couple of our health and PE district resource teachers with us. We have an adapted uh, PE specialist in the Honolulu district as well. State office teacher, educational specialist. Got some CrossFit, some fishing, basketball, hiking. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so as we start today, I want us to take a, a moment and I'll pause here so you can really think about this. And if you could, uh, please jot down in the chat box again, any things that come to mind, but think for a moment what this means to you. Um, if you could put a few words to why should we invest in the health of our students? Any thoughts that come to your mind? I'll leave about 30 seconds here. We got healthy students are healthy learners. At the end of the day, all we have is our health. I agree, it affects our entire life no matter what. Pretty impactful statements, thank you for sharing. And I'm sure a lot of others, um, you would agree with you. Um, one quote I came across and has kind of stuck with me and I, I tend to lean on um, is this, uh, it was from a Greek scholar and physician, Herophilus, and I think uh, he did a great job when he said, when health is absent, wisdom cannot reveal itself. Art cannot manifest, strength cannot fight, wealth becomes useless, and intelligence cannot be applied. And today, um, we're mainly going to focus on the opening and the closing there. When health is absent, intelligence cannot be applied. And I think it's very relevant for us as educators. Um, we want the best for our students. We want them to learn. Um, and there are ways where we can help facilitate that. And it's not as complicated as you think. Um, just incorporating movement and uh, putting in things to help ensure that they're healthy and active can really help with the learning in our schools. So the goals for today in our presentation, um, number one is to understand the importance of physical activity and physical education. I'm going to just share some local and national policies uh, and information there. And then really we'll dig into the back half, which is the strategies and resources to integrate physical activity into the classroom, as well as how to deliver physical education in an online learning environment. Now it does say online, but again, I will give you some context. So you could do a lot of these activities in your classroom with physical distancing and wearing a mask uh, with partner activities, but also you could do it synchronously 
um, online with your students on the screen. You could also do it asynchronously where you would send a link, send a video, uh, send a dance, and the, the students could do it on their own, either as homework, as an assignment, um, rather than doing it live with you. Target audience, um, really, uh, I might be a little biased, but I feel this is an important message for everybody. Uh, that'd be humans. Uh, but I think in the school system, definitely administrators, uh, principals, CASs can benefit, although I know many of them uh, already are aware of the research and are already doing a lot of things in their schools to support health and wellness. Um, so thanks uh, for that support and ask that they continue to do that. But really, it's it's for the teachers. And, and also, you'll notice some of the examples I'm going to use today are geared more for elementary classroom teachers. Uh, but again, there's applications for everybody from PE teachers to special education teachers and the rest. So let's get into that first section, understanding the importance of physical activity and physical education. If you go to our, uh, and again, this is an example where you see the image. If you were to click on that when we have the, the slides, which again, I'll share later. I don't want you doing it now. Um, that's why I didn't share it. But uh, you can click on that and it'll take you right to the DOE mission uh, page where you'll find the vision. And I'll just let you, you know, look at that. I'm sure you're all very familiar. But, you know, what are what is our purpose? What are we looking to do? We want students who are educated, healthy and joyful, lifelong learners. So we definitely can impact that. The Naho Pena'a O framework or HA um, has very uh, various outcomes that we're looking for and you see them there, the acronym BREATH. Um, today's focus, I just wanna highlight a few um, of the things that you'll see in total well-being. So if you go into the framework and explore it a little bit, you'll notice some of these desired outcomes and it's, you know, for us to learn about and practice a healthy lifestyle. That's what we're here for. Make choices that improve the mind, body, heart, and spirit. Be able to meet the demands of school and life. You know, having that level of health and fitness, again, helps you to make it through the day and be focused uh, in your learning. Manage stress and frustration levels appropriately. Have goals and plans for healthy habits and also having enough energy to get things done daily. So oftentimes you hear the term energizers or brain breaks, and again, they're very purposeful to help bring that energy um, so that we can do the work. Um, those are a couple of local um, uh, examples. Now at the national level, you have the physical activity guidelines for Americans, and this comes from the US Department of Health and Human Services, where they recommend children and adolescents should get 60, more, uh, 60 minutes or more of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day. Um, so when you see MVPA moving forward, or if you hear me say MVPA, that's just moderate to vigorous physical activity. That slightly heavy breathing, elevated heart rate, a little bit of sweat, um, that, that's what we're talking about there. And again, just a little more details here, doing some muscle strengthening and some bone strengthening activities should be a part of it also. This doesn't have to be in a gym with weights. That can be doing stuff as simple as pull-ups, push-ups, squats, using your own body weight, um, and even walking, jumping, bounding, those types of things help um, with strengthening bones. Other things to note about physical activity, we should be providing opportunities and encouragement and again, these things should be age appropriate, enjoyable, and a variety. Um, the worst thing you want is uh, for somebody who really does not like ba basketball to be stuck doing basketball for two months, and that's their only option available to them when it's time for physical activity. So hopefully, you know, we can provide a variety of physical activities so students um, can find things that they're good at, that they're interested in, and that's where that student choice and voice um, can come in. Healthy People 2030, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but this is, again, another U.S. Department of Health um, and Human uh, Services. And they have a couple of initiatives that I've highlighted here for physical activity. The group um, has a target to increase um, the number of students who are doing enough physical activity and also to reduce the proportion of childhood obesity. As we know, obesity is a big problem in our country and oftentimes those uh, individuals with obesity puts you at risk for a lot of uh, accompanying health issues and health concerns. 
So looking at some local data, if we look at our youth risk behavior survey or YRBS data, um, you'll see what you're seeing here, the bars on the top, um, Hawaii is represented in orange and then the national average. Again, this is for high school students. Um, what you're seeing is they answered the question of they do 60 minutes or more of physical activity on all seven days in a week. And you can see that this is a big problem nationally, that only about a quarter of high school students nationally report being physically active for at least an hour every day of the week. Uh, and again, that's the guideline set forth um, by the, the CDC and the Department of Health. And here in Hawaii, we certainly have room for improvement as well, as we're only at about one in five um, high school students meeting that requirement. And then you can see for physical education, we definitely have some, some room to catch up as well. And this one was they attended PE class on one or more days on a given week um, when they took the survey. So you can see the national average being 50% and Hawaii being right around 40% for high school students. So definitely opportunity um, to improve there um, in the nation and also here in Hawaii. How we can do that, we have um, you know, board policies, uh, board policy 1031, health and wellness, but to put that into practice, we have our wellness guidelines, which give us um, some goals to do in various areas like nutrition, health education, physical education, physical activity. And I'm just highlighting here for you today a couple, um, one from physical activity. So the second goal there is that students are provided with physical activity breaks at least every 60 minutes. So this is for all of our learners. This is saying they should not be sitting um, for more than 60 minutes at a time without doing some type of break. Again, it doesn't have to be a 30 minute workout. It could be a three minute um, fitness activity. It could be a, a five minute yoga, uh, series of yoga poses. It could be a dance routine um, following along with a video, but uh, it could be doing some fun um, brain activities, getting out of their seat but this is something we should be doing uh, with all of our students at least every 60 minutes. And then in terms of physical education, I'm sure you're all well aware, but at the elementary level, uh, we should be getting at least 45 minutes a week of physical education. The national average is 150 minutes per week. Um, so it's very important we're getting at least that, that 45 and, and more if we, if we can. Um, and then at the secondary grades, they should get at least 200 minutes per week and the national recommendation there is 225 minutes so we're pretty pretty close um, as far as that goes so how do you put these policies and recommendations into practice um, the centers for disease control and prevention or cdc uh, uses this whole school whole community whole child or WISC model as a framework. And within it, um, if you're not familiar, you'll see 10 components that are all very relevant. Things like social emotional climate, employee wellness, community involvement, counseling, psychological and social services. But again, for today, I wanna highlight one of the components, which is physical activity and physical education as a key component of the WISC model where we're focusing on educating the whole child, knowing that all of those things will impact how they're gonna perform in the classroom. So you, you've heard me say uh, uh, numerous times now that physical education, physical activity, they're important, but in case you're confused or not sure the difference, um, what you have here is actually uh, just a image of a PDF from Shape America, which is the national organization for health and physical educators. And it helps to kind of highlight sort of the difference in the role they play. And basically physical education is an academic skills-based class taught by a certified teacher in physical education. It should have lessons aligned to national and or state standards and have sequential activities that are designed to meet outcomes. Um, whereas physical activity is where students have opportunities to apply those skills that they learned in PE. And this can be in the form of structured or unstructured structured play and uh, may include all types uh, of movement. But it's important to know that students need both. So I don't want you to get the impression that the things I'm gonna share today are fun activities, kids can move, and then if we do that, we're doing our job uh, because that is not a replacement for you know, quality 
physical education instruction um, where students are learning the essential skills, especially again at the elementary level, those foundational locomotor skills, manipulative skills, throwing, catching, striking, um, hopping, jumping, galloping, skipping, and all those things that will help them um, to be involved in physical activity and to be active for the rest of their lives. So why do we do it? Um, what are the benefits of physical activity? Um, I think we're well aware of the physical benefits that it can help to reduce obesity and the chance of obesity, and it can also reduce the risk for various chronic diseases that, that go along with that, whether that's heart issues, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, and so forth. But there's also emotional benefits, and I'm sure many of you are aware of this. If you ever feel that euphoric feeling after going for a run or after doing a kickboxing workout, um, it's those endorphins that are released uh, where you have um, feelings uh, that can help reduce feelings of depression and anxiety, can also promote psychological well-being in our students. And finally, there's that cognitive benefit, which again, as educators in the classroom, we're um, you know, very in tune with, and that's improving attention, concentration, uh, memory, and even academic achievement. So just to kind of close up, just to show some research on this, so this isn't just uh, according to George and what I think, uh, what you're seeing here, and just to help orientate you to this, this was a study done uh, back in 2009 with a composite of 20 students. So what you're seeing is brain scans of 20 students, and it's the same 20 students, just they did a cognitive task and they measured their brain activity when doing the task. Once the one you're seeing on the left was after sitting quietly for 20 minutes, and the one on the right is after uh, walking on a treadmill for 20 minutes and then doing the same cognitive task. And the colors that you're seeing, the um, cooler colors like blue and green are low to minimal brain activity and the red and orange are mid to high brain activity and you could see here that even from just a 20 minute bout of walking um, you see a lot more brain activity and sometimes people might misunderstand and think oh yeah that makes sense they're walking so they're getting a lot of blood flow so that's blood flow to the brain um, while we do get in it you know oxygen and blood flow which is great this is looking at brain activity, um, so more so than just blood flow. And why is that important? Well, those students taking the test, some of the things uh, after they were walking, they responded faster, they had a gra greater allocation of working memory, and they also made fewer errors on the test. So that was acute physical activity, which means just a quick bout, and then you see the benefits right away. And it you know, could last up to 30 to 45 minutes, which is why we say to you know, plan in that activity right before you're doing a math block or a reading block so that you can reset their attention, get them focused, and get them ready to learn, and you can reap the benefits over that, that next block of learning from that little bout of activity. What this um, slide is, is showing is a follow-up study. Um, this one was in 2014 um, in the, with the kids fit, uh, fit Kids intervention out of the University of Illinois. And this was a larger sample of elementary students. And this was an intervention where kids came, I'll um, go ahead and put these. This is looking at chronic engagement in physical activity. So not a single bout, but what, do you, what happens when it's continuous, when it's a part of their routine. And this was an after-school intervention program that lasted for a year. I believe it was 150 days out of the 170 school days they had, these students participated. And what they did when they came was they got greater than 70 minutes of intermittent MVPA per session. So every afternoon after school, um, they were doing over an hour of moderate to vigorous physical activity um, over the course of the school year. And what you're seeing is the pre and post results. So when they came back from summer and they were pre-tested, you could see their activity, which there was some going on, probably because kids are running around and doing sports and activities and being active in the summer. Um, so that might be a reason there. But look at the improvement over the course of the year to these kids who are constantly and chronically engaged in physical activity. And then you have the control group, which did not have the intervention. And it's interesting to see there was actually some regression there 
Um, and again, I mentioned this was in the Midwest, so that could be the post test was done in the spring. So that could be due to sort of the hibernation effect. Uh, you might hypothesize that those kids were, um, you know, coming out of winter and not having as many opportunities to be outside and be active. But just to highlight the types of things that were done, they had healthy snacks. They were there was an instant activity, fitness stations. They were working on motor skills, dancing, dribbling, throwing, catching, jump rope, and the like. So hopefully that gives you a little bit um, to, to feel convinced and see the value of why it's important for us to, to get kids moving in two buckets. So we have that acute, that sudden bout of activity, and these are our quick brain boost and energy energizers, and then that chronic engagement, which is looking at um, more of that comprehensive before school, after school, during school opportunities to be active. I know that was a lot of talking and we need to model and practice what we preach. So if any of you are feeling like this right now, um, you could probably think of what some of your students feel like uh, when we just talk and, and go through a lesson without giving them a break or an opportunity. Uh, because you folks are adult learners, uh, I'm gonna have you bear with me a couple more minutes as I explain some of the next activities and then we'll get you up and moving. Um, so we have some of those examples. So moving into the, the second phase, we're gonna look at strategies and resources to get that acute physical activity in your classrooms. And again, uh, these first few examples will be targeted towards elementary classroom teachers. But again, you'll get ideas and applications that anybody could use. Could even use it with your staff in meetings uh, or at the workplace. So again, just to drive home the point, what I was just talking about, I talked to you about the acute um, classroom activities on the school-wide front. I think this image from, from the CDC, their active healthy schools um, kind of shows what a comprehensive school health um, program looks like. And you have physical education and physical activity at the center, but there's various components, family and community engagement. These are things like having a walking school bus, um, in your communities where it is accessible, having bike racks and encouraging um, students to ride their bikes to school, having uh, activity during school with that recess and great programs and activities going on there, having activity breaks in the classroom, having a quality physical education program where students are getting and learning those skills and practicing those skills. Before and after school programs, I know a lot of our schools have intramurals, have A plus programs that have a lot of movement and activity uh, and also walking programs and such uh, before school. And then finally that purple one down there, staff involvement is very important as well, um, making sure we have a healthy and active staff and make sure we're taking care of our well-being as well. So reasons why we do those in-class activities again, movement integration, and just a quick example of this would be if you're teaching kindergartners, let's say new words, and instead of just having them look at a bunch of words on a screen or say sandbox, for instance, you could say, raise your hand and say sand, raise your other hand, say box, clap your hands together and say sandbox, sandbox. And so like, like that's, that's just a simple example of how you can purposely um, incorporate movement to help facilitate the learning. It can also be used as a tool to reset attention, like I said before that block of learning, energizers, brain breaks, brain boost, could be a teaching strategy that's reactive. If you see kids that are getting sluggish and starting to fade on you, um, they're losing interest or not engaged, you may just bring out one of those in, uh, brain breaks that you have. You might put on a goal noodle um, activity and get kids up and moving. So they can be academic or non-academic, and I'm gonna give you a few examples um, of both. So with that, we're gonna do our first activity, and, and I'm showing this, uh, in case any of you use WebEx, this is just a practical tip for you because I'm gonna have to do this right now. Um, but if you're not aware, when you go to share videos, if you've had some issues with the sound or the picture quality not being very good, um, when you click on your share tab, there's a, a nice feature where you can click on um, it allows you to optimize for motion and video, and then it also lets you check the box that says share your computer audio. Um, so that'll just help. Uh, my screen will just pause here for a second as we get that up for you. But if, if you're not aware, I wanted to show that to you so you folks had that uh, as a reference. Okay. And I think I should be sharing my screen again. 
So before I get started with the video, just want to uh, preface and tell you what you're going to be seeing. So this one, I'm going to ask you all. So at this time, if you folks could turn on your cameras um, and I'm going to explain. And then in a minute, I'm going to have you get up out of your, your seats and try to do this along um, with the video. And this one is called Elephant March. It's incorporating movement to learn math. And this is skip counting by threes. And um, it's a fun way to teach it, but it's also very purposeful. So what I'm going to do is, is um, go ahead and share. And I'm going to ask you to just uh, follow along and, with the uh, instructor that you see on the screen as she teaches this to her class. Um, and these are young elementary students. I'm not sure the grade level, but I can tell you I did this one um, with my preschooler and kindergartner, and they picked it up right away. So with that, um, you can go ahead and get up and follow along. Elephant March. The first thing that you do is to put your hands straight out, clap them together, cross one over the other. Now take your thumbs and turn them up, and now turn them down, interlock your fingers, and scoop like an ice cream cone. This is our elephant's trunk, and we're going to do the Elephant March. The first thing to do is to take your right foot and cross it over your left and whisper one. Then your left foot and over your right and whisper two. Then raise your elephant's trunk and say three. three. Great job. Thanks for participating. Um, it may seem kind of complicated or silly, or why are we interlocking our hands and why are we crossing our midline? So just another um, sort of tip when you, that midline of your body, whenever you're crossing, that helps um, again to engage both the left and right hemisphere. Um, uh, to get them coordinated and working together. Um, so again, these are very purposeful uh, activities to help facilitate that learning. And also notice the whispering one, two, and then shouting the three um, to kind of highlight the counting by threes. Okay. So we're gonna move on to our next activity. And this one um, is rock, paper, scissors, or locally, here in Hawaii, referred to as Jang Ken Po, or Jang Ken Po, I cannot show. Um, this version is the active version, and it's jump, 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 show. And so I want to first explain real quick what it would look like in the classroom. And because we don't really have that to model here, uh, I'm not going to, um, you know, share that with you. Um, but we will do an alternative for synchronous online learning. So let me just run through a couple quick things. So the way this would work for face-to-face, -face, um, if your kids are in the classroom, it's a partner activity. Uh, and again, mask on, six or more feet apart, keep your social, uh, physical distancing. But we're gonna work on addition. And the way this game will work is students are gonna use one hand and we're just gonna give them the prompt, no zeros. So it's their choice. They can use one, two, three, four, or five. So instead of showing rock, paper, or scissors, they're going to show a number from one to five, and they're going to add it up. And so between you and your partner, <clears throat> you show a number, you're going to look at your partner's number and add it up, and you're going to say it out loud. You can whisper it, you can say it, you can shout it, depending on your classroom and what you're comfortable with. The first person to say the correct answer gets a point, and you could play till five. Um, <clears throat> So again, how it would work is with the jump, 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 show, it would be just jump, 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 show. So you would show your number. If my partner had up two, I would yell out six. And if I was the first to, to get that correct answer, I would get a point. And we could do multiple rounds of this. Okay. Now, 
Uh, obviously, for your young ones, you can limit the range uh, by giving them prompts. So again, one to five, the most you know we're going to have is 10. But if you're ready to count to 20 and so on, you could use two hands um, and get it up to 20. You can also do multiplication uh, and other things as well. So right now, I'm going to show you an alternative, uh, which would be for our distance learning. So for folks in a online environment, how we can do it. So because we're not going to be able to have the feedback and, and play with a partner, we're going to do this with the teacher. So I'm the teacher, you folks are the students, so you're all going to kind of do this with me. It's not really a competition, unless you want it to be. Um, so it's another math activity, and I'm going to say a target. For instance, I'll say um, seven is our target. Then I'm going to jump, 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 and show a number. So if I show the number four, you're going to jump, 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 and you're going to find the add-in or what that number is that we need to add with the four to reach seven, and you're going to show it on show. So again, you folks can play with this as teachers, depending on your students and how much time they need. You may show it right away. You may have numbers already sort of printed up um, and have that as an alternative. I'm sorry my signs aren't um, beautiful and luxurious, but we have something where you could hold up and you could show them a number this way, or you could use your finger. And again, you know, ask them, can you all see my hand okay? You know, and if, if they're not, you got to have an alternative for them, all right? Um, so you guys got the sample. What we're going to do uh, for this one, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So rather than seeing my screen, we can see you all enjoying this fun game, and we'll do a few rounds together. Okay, so with that, um, let me stop sharing. And if you all could get on up, get ready to jump, 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 and show. Okay, and I'm just going to have the um, the option for you folks if you can't see, but um, our first target number, and I need you all to remember that, your target number is eight. Okay, so whatever I show, um, you want to add up to eight. Everybody ready? Ready. Jump, 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 show. I see a bunch of fives out there. Great job, learners. We're going to do another round. Give yourselves a hand if you got the right answer. <clears throat> okay, next one. We're going to do the number six. Our target is six. So we want to add up to six. You and me working together. Ready? Jump, 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 show. I see four. Now I see some of you are using two hands. Remember our instructions, and if I wasn't clear, right now we're just using one hand. You got to do it on one hand. Excellent. Okay. One more round using just one hand. So let's see if we can follow those instructions. You're just going to use one hand to show your number, and our target for this round is three. Target is three. Ready? Jump, 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 show. I see some shakas. I see some twos. Great job. One plus two is three. So you guys get the idea. So let's, while you're up, let's just go. Now let's go to a two hand version. So let's say we wanted to take it up going as high as 20. Um, we can use two hands. And this time our target number is going to be 18. 18. And now there's a lot of ways you can show your answer. There's no one right answer, right? Depending on what the number is, you decide you're going to use two hands to show your answer. 18 is our target. Ready? Jump, 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 show. I see some four and fours. I see some five and threes. Excellent. A couple different ways we can add up to eight, which was our answer. All right, I think you guys get the hang of it, so you guys can sit back down. And that was jump, 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 show, which again, you can do 
if you got kids at home, you could do the teacher version online with them while you have your kids in class doing their own game with their partner. As long as they're keeping their distancing, they can do you know the the in class version that that we went through there. <clears throat> Okay, another example for you. This one is a multiple choice review, and we're going to use a social studies uh, example here. But if you could all get out of your seats again, and this one, as I go through these, you can um, do them in place. So for multiple choice review, you're going to have A, B, C, or D. So A is walking in place, so you can get up and practice that. This is also, we're telling them to practice, but it's also an excuse to get them moving. Um, if you think the answer is B, and I'm gonna give you the question in a minute, but you take your left hand and tap it to your right knee, right hand to your left knee, if you think the answer is B. Get those knees up, arms across, and you just keep doing that movement if you think the choice is B. C is gonna be an upper body jumping jack. So again, if um, you're in a wheelchair or you don't have the ability to use your legs, you just use your arms and do an upper body jumping jack. If you'd like, you can do a full body jumping jack. And then finally D, this one's a little complicated. Take your right hand and touch your nose. Take your left hand and touch your right ear. And then switch. Oh, <laughs> told you it was hard. <laughs> Got to get that brain working. Crossing that midline. Okay, so those are the four choices. So what I'm going to do is give you a question. And your question is, this is a review in something we just learned. We were just talking about presidents. So we want to um, check our understanding there. Which one of these individuals was not a U.S. president? Which one of these was not a U.S. president? If you think it's A, George Washington, you can go ahead and walk. B, Thomas Jefferson, you can tap left hand to right knee. C, Alexander Hamilton, you can do your upper body jumping jacks. D, Martin Van Buren, you can do your touch your nose and touch your ear and switch. Go ahead and do the activity, whatever you think the answer is. Okay, stop. It looks like the most uh, common choices we saw there were C and D. Um, while Alexander Hamilton was one, in, was one of our founding fathers and a politician and a statesman and an economist and a whole bunch of other things, he was not a US president. Um, so C is the correct answer, although he is on the $10 bill. Um, but yeah, thanks for the review. And, and really what I wanted to, to share with you here was this is a way if you want to check real quick in a fun visual way what your students know instead of having having them put something in the chat box you can go ahead and engage them this way and having them physically active to give their response. So this was an example let's say again in social studies but you could do this in, in any uh, content area where you want to engage the whole class. And it's also a safe space. In other words, I might be a little off and I might see everybody doing this. So then I might, you know, kind of just switch and get on board. But as the teacher, I could kind of see where my students were at. And that's okay that if they correct themselves, um, you know, as they go and they're, they're learning from their peers, that's all right. But for me as a teacher, I can get some immediate feedback on my students. Um, so just to show you in the elementary classroom again, and, and I'm just giving an example, let's say for um, kindergarten, first grade with your learners at home. This is not a uh, endorsement or a sample schedule for you to use. This is not, George said, this is a schedule everybody should use. This is just an idea to kind of show you how you can purposely put in breaks. Um, so I'm not you know, sure exactly uh, how you all are scheduling things in your buildings, but here's a sample. So let's just say, you can kind of take a look there. You got your check-in, a little break. You have a, a ELA block, a math block, lunch, 
Um, you have some uh, other content areas in the afternoon, whether it's PE, health, fine arts, computer science, you take a break and then you have science or social studies or both, um, and that's kind of your day. If you're not purposely planning activities here, again, for your students at school, they may have recess and have those options. The kids at home, it's not okay to just say, okay, guys, make sure you're not playing games on your iPad um, during your break time. Go do some activity, make sure you're being active and we'll see you back for math. You wanna schedule in some activity to make sure they're getting it and it doesn't have to be long. Again, we're talking five minutes. So to give you an example of what it could look like with physical activity, just five minutes, so you have that 20 minute break where again, some kids might have recess. Um, our kids could do what they would like, but then come back five minutes before and we're all gonna do some yoga poses together before we start our reading block. Clear our minds, get focused, do some activity. Um, at 1025, we may do five minutes of following along on a video or doing a dance routine or, or doing a, a, you know, of, of following a dance on the screen for five minutes and having some fun before we sit down and, and do our math block. And then we could do some fitness activity in the afternoon to wake ourselves up get the blood flowing, get our brains activated for some science and social studies. So again, just giving you um, an, an example of what it could look like to purposely plan those things in. And a recommendation would be on the first couple to do it with them synchronously, everybody together. And then later, um, you know, you could have them do it um, on their own where you would send the link, you would put it in your Google Classroom or Seesaw and have that activity for them to do on their own. I want to share an example um, of one of our schools, and we do have a PE teacher with us today, Dara. She's the PE teacher at Helemano Elementary, and she shared a few examples with, uh, with me to share with you all today of what things they're doing to uh, support and promote physical activity and physical education. So this is looking at, again, more that chronic physical activity, school-wide policies or programs um, that can help have impact. And uh, let me just make sure I'm good there. So for their students, some things that they're doing is a high quality standards based PE curriculum. And I, I had the benefit of seeing um, Dara in her classroom and she's got the standards and objectives up on the wall and they're checking them off as they go throughout the year. Um, that's that great foundation. They have a great recess where it's unstructured play in a controlled and safe environment. And then in response uh, to COVID and, and the, the times where we have kids at home and we don't have as much opportunities for physical activity, um, what you have is this Wellness Wednesdays Live, which I'm gonna show you a quick little, little clip here. Uh, and again, this is involving the whole school, including those uh, distance learners. So again, wanna thank uh, Dara and Hele Mano for sharing that with us. And, and that was things that they're doing uh, for their students, but you saw that Wellness Wednesdays, you got teachers up and moving kids in the classroom, students at home, all engaging together in some physical activity once a week um, to get their day started. So a great example of how you can do this um, school-wide. And then another example. Sorry. Move on um, with teachers. Uh, we know staff wellness is important. Healthy teachers, 
healthy students. We need to model that behavior. So they have wellness Thursdays, which has turned into wellness Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. They have a one hour class uh, for teachers and staff. They also do a mission slim possible, which is a challenge uh, that takes place every January for all of Q3. And they put up money and they win money. So there's prizes for first, second, and third place. And again, it just promotes that culture of support, community, um, challenge um, with your peers to embrace that, that healthy lifestyle. So those are some examples of, again, just some activities and ideas for in your classroom, as well as some school-wide policies or programs that you can do to make sure we're, we're getting that physical education and physical activity. The last part I wanna share is physical education and how we can integrate this into online learning. And rather than, than going too far into it, I just wanna share at the school level, um, if you have a PE teacher there at the elementary, turn to them as a resource. You may have a wellness committee. <clears throat> it may be your grade level or department um, team, a curriculum coordinator or coach. But again, working with that tri-level system, we do have health and PE district resource teachers um, across the state, and that's a great resource for you. And then at the state level, um, there are some resources. We have the learning design resource and some online resources for physical education and physical activity, which I have linked at the end of the presentation. But I would uh, uh, strongly encourage you as your go-to resource to lean, um, check in with those health and PE resource teachers um, for some ideas. And um, here's just a look, uh, so you can locate your complex area and kind of see who your appropriate person is. I'm sure you're very familiar or aware of these folks. If you're not, um, get to know them, shoot them an email, or uh, see, ho hopefully uh, um, they don't get inundated too much, but uh, we wanna support you uh, in promoting that physical activity and physical education. Um, they're a great resource, so. And then this just highlights some of the things that they do. Um, complex area district workshops, they host PDE3 courses, uh, distance learning, uh, uh, and they have uh, uh, lending libraries. When you guys get back to school, if you need equipment and things like that, you can check in with them. I know we're getting close on time. We wanted to leave a lot for Q&A. Uh, I just wanna walk through a couple of resources that were created by the um, district health and PE resource teachers. and. Um, that's the virtual PE classrooms that they put together. And they have them in different grade bands, K2, 3, 5, 6, 8. Um, weekly lesson plans include, uh, not always, but these types of things, a warm up, a fitness activity, a skill development or focus, an exit pass or activity log, and some other things. And again, a tip here would be not just to send the link and say, do this or check it out on the website. I would encourage you to schedule in that 40 minutes uh, which our wellness guidelines say 45 minutes, at least once a week, um, 40 minutes, 45 minutes to walk through and do the lesson with them the first or, you know, first couple of times. And once they're comfortable, um, again, especially for the young ones, the students, but also their caregivers, parents, grandparents, whomever, um, is familiar and comfortable. And then in the future, you could park it um, uh, send it home in, as in an email or in your Google Classroom and, and have them do that asynchronously on their own. So just to give you a, a couple of quick examples here. One, this is for third uh, through fifth grade. And I'll just click on a couple of things. There is an I which gives you some information and an overview. What I like here with this start uh, button, if you click on that, it gives instructions. So it kind of tells what the focus is. It gives some cues for catching. Square up to the thrower, eyes on your target, where your hand should be. <clears throat> and then it kind of tells them how to navigate through the virtual classroom. Okay. <clears throat> And then um, this one starts with a fitness activity. So if you click on the cones, it'll bring up the activity. <clears throat> We're not gonna do this. And again, just for time, just wanna show you, it says right on there, 30 seconds each movement, jumping jacks, squats, push-ups, tuck jumps, jump rope. If they don't have a jump rope, they can use an uh, invisible jump rope. So those are some uh, uh, activities for their fitness warm-up. 
Okay. And then next. Um, I want to show you this. If you click on the equipment here, this is a great resource. It shows at home equipment. So standard things that we use in PE, like a ball, a uh, bat, a basketball, it gives you alternatives. So like bundling up socks, having water bottles for bowling pins and things of that nature. Um, it's a great resource for at home equipment replacements. <clears throat> So the activity um, we were going to do, but for the sake of time, I think uh, we'll leave it. Uh, but thanks for those of you who were uh, prepared and bundled up your piece of paper to make your own ball. Um, but throwing and, uh, and catching, you know, we could just do the PDF. They would follow along. Again, if we were doing this together, everybody turn on the camera and we would, you know, throw 20 times up in the air and catch. If they don't have a ball, they could use a stuffed animal. Um, bundled up paper, bundled up socks, anything like that, catch with the right hand. And again, it's so important for um, young students just to have opportunity to practice these basic skills. Um, it is important to be mindful of their homes and the environments they're in. So if you're dealing with um, students that don't have a lot of physical activity space, maybe they're in an apartment, just be mindful of that and, and again, provide those uh, alternatives for them. And one example for middle school, um, this is six through eight. And again, when you folks have more time, you can click around and explore. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to your um, district resource teachers. Uh, but same type of setup. Uh, one thing to highlight here, if you're not familiar, our Aloha PE project is a video competition. And what um, this district has done is kind of laid it out where in every lesson, the students are doing a component and if they stick with it over time, they can be at the end of it, basically com complete that Aloha PE project by doing these weekly lessons. So you'll notice it brings up for them to make a copy and it's already got um, you know, a document ready for them with you know, questions to answer, a calendar to plug in their activities, utilizing the fit, fit principle, frequency, intensity, time, and type. What types of activities, how long, when are they doing it? And again, they could just share that back with their teacher. So it's a very clean, easy way to navigate um, and also like a physical activity log at the end. They can make a copy and then they can log their activity and submit that back to the teacher. And then finally, um, Again, if you're going through the slide deck later, I just highlighted a few kind of top level resources. Shape America is that national resource. Um, they have uh, you know, tons of partners and activities um, for, for teachers. Hopper is our local organization. And that's the Hawaii Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation and Dance. There's recorded webinars on there. There's links to various uh, resources that are available. So another place you could check out. Uh, the learning design, if you're not familiar with that, on the DOE website, um, all the content areas are represented there. So if you find physical education, you can find a lot of good information and resources. This snapshot here is uh, online resources for physical education and physical activity, which you can find in the learning design for PE. And it's just an alphabetical list of you know various uh, organizations, curriculums, activities, uh, that you know you can pull from um, to find activities and things to do. And again, always make sure you're checking with your administration and finding things suitable um, you know, for, your, for your learners at home, making sure safety is, is being promoted as well. And then you got uh, CDC and D-Shines. This is a um, healthy, healthy schools um, link and there's classroom activities uh, for teachers as well as uh, physical education activities. So that's a great uh, list. They have weekly resources um, also. So feel free to check that out. So just to, to wrap up uh, again, want uh, want to thank everybody for joining us today and, and hope um, you 
after going through this, it helps to reinforce probably some of the things you already know or believe. Um, and if not now, hopefully you can see the importance of and value that physical activity and physical education brings to our schools and our students. And hopefully you have a few ideas and strategies that you can use to integrate physical activity um, with your online learners as well as um, your students in the classroom. And that goes for physical education as well. And just to tie it back to how we started, when health is absent, intelligence cannot be applied. And when health is present, you know, that's where we're going to have um, uh, engaged, ready to learn students. Um, I do know we're right at our hour mark, so uh, I am happy to stay on and I don't know how many uh, questions or ideas we had coming in on the chat, but I will be here uh, for a few minutes if anybody has any questions, comments about a resource or um, any of the ideas that were shared. Um, we'll, we'll have a few minutes here. Um, so I'm just getting to the chat now. I'm seeing a few comments. I love these short break ideas. Need more history work too. Uh, George, I, I have you, a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you have common um, modifications you do for um, some students? I guess it's common maybe concerns that come up that that could be helpful for students that might have issues with certain movements. Yeah, um, and Camille is on as well. She's our adapted PE specialist, so um, I, I can start and then Camille, you can feel free to chime in as well. Um, but again, depending on environments, um, having suitable equipment replacements. Um, one example that was shared was like, if students are confined, let's say to a wheelchair or if they had an injury and they can't use their legs or something, it's providing an alternative um, like using the hands. Let's say we were doing um, a lower body movement uh, such as marching in place. You could say if you are unable to march, you can sit in your chair and move your arms up and down and that could be your marching or you could alternate. Um, so it's just being mindful and providing an alternative. Um, you know, oftentimes like with push ups, if you take a push up with proper form and a straight back, we could give alternatives like um, going on the knees doing a modified push up, you could use a wall and lean against a wall and do a press. Um, so those are a couple of ideas. And Camille, if you're still on, if you have any other good examples to share to address the question, um, that would be great. Yeah, no, Chrissy, I think that's a great question. There's always uh, ways to include our students. Um, most importantly, I, I prefer, you know, having the student be a part of versus sitting on the side, uh, you know, um, is there anything specific you wanted to ask? Because it's always so difficult. George, you did a great job in, in making these general uh, recommendations. But yeah, is there, there's myself in Honolulu District as well as, I should put a little plug, I guess, as well as Sandy Oda in uh, Windward District. Um, oh. But yeah, there's just technically the two of us. Uh, otherwise, in the other districts, uh, I guess you could ask the PE health RTs, but I think you're, you'd probably be directed to the special education resource teachers. Yeah, and, and just one more thing is making sure you're applying to different senses. So if you have visual or auditory, you know, a lot of times I'll say things, but I'll also show it with my hands as well, explaining what they're going to do using, you know, visuals, um, uh, tambourines, things for sound. You can use colors. Um, so just using the variety of of cues um, so that you know all students can can be involved. Right, hand over hand assistance, also using the verbal cues like George is saying, so that you connect the physical. Um, I remember having a child who was very involved at a school, um, couldn't physically do, uh, and had uh, one of those communication boards, and when I you know, was um, debriefing with the students on what was this local motor skill, you know, uh, but the students who could physically do it, none of them were giving me any feedback. And then that one child 
who couldn't physically do it typed in the words so the machine could v verbally say it and spot on for all the locomotor skills. So although sometimes we might not be able to see them physically participate, you know, they showed me <laughs> that uh, they could cognitively, you know, understand. And that was uh, awesome. You know, again, it's, it's that awakening, you know, awareness. Yeah, so I love that. Um, and again, you know, the basic, you know, if a child is more involved, you know, putting that, a you know, a piece of equipment ball and just letting them knock it off of the tray uh, is that's going to be their throw. You know, it's just going to look a little different, but, the, you know, we still want to engage. Uh, if they are very tight, we can try and stretch them out. You know, again, a, a lot of it, depending on, again, I'm, I'm assuming you're, you're speaking to more involved students. Get it, yeah, getting that upper body motion, getting that stretch uh, from, you know, PTs. Uh, make sure you consult with the PT to, that you're not doing anything contra indicated for the student, you know, because because we don't want anyone injured. Um, so that's always a preference. Yeah. But again, if there's anything specific. Thank you. That was very helpful. And, Thank you and for asking. And, and Dara, if you're still on, I don't know if I, I did a good job explaining, but if you wanted to share any um, more impact that you saw with some of the things you folks are doing at your school, um, you can feel free to, to chime in. You were great, man. <laughs> did a good job. I think it's just hard in COVID life you know, doing what we can to support our teachers. That's a huge initiative for our school because we have A, B, we only see them half the time, right? And the other half, they're at home. So just trying to keep our teachers motivated and happy and just trying to support them as best as we can. Um, you noted that our teachers' wellness went from Thursday to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's half because a lot of the gym shut down and half because the teachers have a whole lot more steam to blow off. So <laughs> being able for them to work out, come in uh, after school, get in a workout and then go home happy uh, has been very helpful for those teachers. Um, so yeah, man, you did good. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank, thank you for sharing. And again, that, that staff wellness is such an important component and like you saw the benefits and, and, you know, we're all well aware, but reducing feelings of depression, anxiety, um, a lot of that stuff that that's building up and, you know, it's tough times for everyone, as Dara said. And um, I know sometimes it feels like we got so much to do and we're up late and preparing and lesson plans and grading and but find that time and it's better if you have, you know, your peers and your staff uh, doing it along with you. So uh, and again, just wanted to highlight that great example. Um, hopefully, you know, we can see more of that uh, going on throughout the department. Any other thoughts or comments, questions from any other participants? Okay, so we will make the uh, the slide deck available uh, as well. And then, like I said, a lot of the information in there is linked and then you could click around and explore. And if you have questions, again, you can always reach out to me uh, or, you know, more importantly, back in your, in your respective districts, um, find your district resource teacher for health and PE and, and get some of those ideas and um, get those things going. So Charlie and Mickey, I guess with that, I don't uh, can wait another 30 seconds here in case anybody's got a comment or a question. Thank you all for sticking around too. I know uh, we went a little over uh, with the Q&A, but um, a lot of good, good thoughts and ideas shared there. Okay. Well, thanks again for everybody for being here. And again, those district and uh, health and PE resource teachers that I keep talking about for all the work they've been doing um, behind the scenes to support and 
um, the teachers and the students in their respective districts.